Lesson learned. When we were filming for U Train in Austria, uh, we arrived at the room where we would be filming all the methods, and we discovered that the floor had a huge carpet. And uh, we were provided with a choice do we leave the carpet or do we take it out? The carpet itself was a uh, very nice carpet. It was soft, it was uh, very comfortable to sit on, to walk on, but it was also bright orange. Taking it out would have given us a concrete floor. At that point, we chose to leave the carpet in. We made that choice because we thought this would give a lot better audio because you don't have a lot of reflection from a stone surface and it would be more comfortable for the people doing the methods. Uh, well, half of that was probably uh, good to take into consideration because afterwards we realized we're not going to record sound most of the time. Um, and what we didn't think of was that a bright orange carpet really uh, has an impact on the lighting in the whole room. So it has an impact on the white balance, the way uh, skin color looks, etc. We managed, we figured it out. It took us a little bit more work afterwards to get the colors right. So this means that you do have to look very closely at the scene that you are filming in. And look at all the details, at the floor, at the wall, uh, etc. And think with everything, how does this impact uh, the, the, the look? How does this impact the audio? Is the audio necessary? Isn't it necessary? Uh, but be very conscious about all the elements of the room that you are filming in and don't leave anything to chance. One of the most important things to keep into consideration is that you have to be very careful and thorough with backing up your material. Uh, in general, how we worked in Austria was like this. We filmed the method, usually with two or three cameras. Afterwards, we offloaded all the material from the memory cards onto a hard drive and then we copied the hard drive to a second hard drive. So we had three copies on the memory cards in the cameras and on two hard drives. And only then do you start formatting the cards for use for another method. And in that way, you have a safety net and you can make sure that you never lose material. But keep in mind that you have to be focused on this and if you are filming for three or four or five days you're going to start losing focus. And this happened to us. Uh, I made a mistake at one point and I formatted a card which hadn't been backed up already. Sometimes people say, well, if you format a card and you lost your material, you can use software to reclaim it, but it's not a guarantee. We discovered this, we used three different programs to try to recover the data from a memory card and we didn't succeed. So keep in mind, you're filming, after the filming, you back it up, you back up the backup, and then you format. And as a filmmaker, I can tell you, at some point, you will make a mistake in this, it will happen. And when it happens, it's, it, it, it will suck. <laughs> you will feel really bad about yourself, but work through the problem and you will survive, you will manage, but be prepared. Everybody makes mistakes. In general, you really uh, uh, visualize and prepare the whole shoot beforehand. Um, and there are no set rules for it. Some people like to just write a script. Some people like to write out shot lists. Some people like to draw out storyboards. You can go in as much detail as you want, but you prepare. But the minute you start filming, you also have to be prepared to throw everything away uh, if needed. Because there's so much that happens on the set that you can't predict in advance. How I see it, uh, a solid filmmaker has great preparation, but a great filmmaker knows how to throw preparation away and improvise and still come up with a professional and high quality product. What is important also is the social uh, preparation before the shoot. You have to build up rapport, you have to build up a sort of co-ownership with the people that you are filming so that they feel part of the product. And that means to just get connected beforehand, 
make small talk, uh, mingle with them, have a drink together and explain to them what you want to do, what you're going to do. Make sure that they're fully on board. That helps so much in having a nice atmosphere and, and also feeling the flexibility when, you are, uh, when you've missed a shot and you say like, oh, I want to try to do it again and people are willing to help you out and do something a second time or a third time. All of that only works if you have a good relationship with your subjects, with the people that you're working with. I believe it works a lot better when people feel comfortable with you. Introducing yourself in a good way is important, but as important is also to wrap up, to, to uh, finalize the production in a good way. Uh, and that means that don't turn off the camera and just walk away, uh, but thank the people that you're working with. Maybe explain to the people uh, what you have done, or what you're going to do, uh, how the whole process will continue. Um, but make sure that you have a proper ending to the shoot. There is something that's called stage fright and that's mostly associated with people walking onto a stage. And in a way, as a cameraman, as a filmmaker, you have the feeling like I won't be the one walking on the stage because I am filming, I'm not in front of the camera. But it works a little bit different. If you have a camera in your hand and you start filming uh, a live training, you also walk onto a stage and I can guarantee you, you will feel a certain amount of stage fright. You will get nervous, you will get maybe cold feet, sweaty hands, I don't know. And then you have to fall back on a sort of ritual, a routine that you designed for yourself to make sure that you do a complete checkup of all the things that you can mess up. So just make sure before every shoot that you just have a checklist in your mind to walk through and make it a routine of yourself to just check off all the points. Are your batteries full? Um, is the memory card in the camera? Uh, is the memory card empty or formatted? Or is it still full from another shoot? You can also have a checklist of just how are the white balance settings? How is the resolution and the frame rate? Um, is it on autofocus or manual focus? These are all things that possibly can make a big impact on how the footage looks and you don't want to have those settings uh, messed up and switched around. When we filmed in Austria, most of the time we used uh, three cameras. Two of those were manned, meaning that I or my colleague uh, was filming handheld or from a tripod. And a third camera was just put on top of a tripod somewhere and filmed an overview shot. And that's a very important one uh, and something that I would definitely advise you always use it. And that's make sure you have this overview shot. Make sure you have a camera that just films the entire setting and just records from start to finish because that is going to be your safety net that's going to be your backup because in a situation where i maybe stumble uh, or maybe out of focus and exactly at the same point my colleague uh, is switching around his memory card then you don't have your footage but if you always have a backup camera then you always know that at the very least that's something that we can use and as an addition to that advice, I would also say that be aware that a backup camera that films an overview, a lot of the time will also film you or your colleague who is filming. So make sure that you're aware of that and try to get out of that shot as much as you can. When you're filming methods, when you're filming a live training situation, you have to be flexible as a cameraman. So try to always film handheld. Try to not use a tripod because you're moving around and then you maybe want to do something over a shoulder and then suddenly you have to go low, etc., etc. Try to be flexible. But that also means that you have to be aware of um, that you're doing your shots very stable and, and in a secure way. So frame your shot 
And as just a basic rule, try to hold your shot for at least five seconds. Count them in your head. And this is because there's one of the biggest mistakes that's most often made in these kinds of situations by cameramen, is that you're thinking that you have the shot, and then you're looking back on the computer and you think like, oh, why didn't I keep this shot a few seconds longer? Because it's not there yet. And I can tell you, I have made the same mistake again and again throughout my career. And again, I did it in Austria. So be stable, be flexible, and be patient. And if you have those three guidelines, then you're gonna do just fine, no matter what camera you have in your hand. A very good tip also is to try, if you have the option, shoot in slow motion. And by that, I mean, in standard settings, your camera will often film either in 24, 25, or 30 frames per second. Now, if your camera has an option to double that amount, and to go to 50 or 60 frames per second, then you get an option in your editing process, so in the post-production, to stretch out the shot, to slow it down. And that can be a very cool look. And it's really helpful for emphasizing certain moments in a training, a gesture that's been made, or a moment where something spectacular is happening. It's just, it's great to use slow motion. But there's also another benefit Sometimes maybe you have a shot, but the shot is just too short to really use. And then you can use slow motion to stretch it out and get it, for example, from a one second shot to a two second shot. And it can really help you out in gluing together your edit. So if you have the knowledge and if you have a camera with the capacity, try to always film in 50 or 60 frames per second. You lose nothing and you have a lot more to gain in the edit. U-Train is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. For more videos on non-formal education, please check out our channel and subscribe.